this particular referee, uh, I don't know should I name it. <laughs> Just uh, name him. Uh. Name yeah. sh- more, the, the more we name, the more we shame them. Uh. Uncle yeah, Lee Mason. That wasn't a yellow. That 100% wasn't a red. Welcome to the Football Kaki. And I am your host, Elden. And I'm joined by my fellow Kaki bros, Jordan and Paul. And today, we have a very, very interesting topic that we have been wanting to discuss for a very long time. But before we get into that, boys, how are you doing? Not feeling too good, huh? But tired. Tired. Uh, A bit bit under uh, under the weather. Falls under the weather. Jordan's feeling a bit tired, is it? Just came back from Bali. Oh, was it a holiday? Uh, it's a company retreat thingy. So. Wow, shook, yeah. <laughs> enjoy, <laughs> enjoy. Was it? So, so you stay at the beach? Uh? Uh, I almost got myself burned. Uh. Huh? <laughs> wait, 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 what happened? What happened? What happened? <laughs> Some burn, uh. no, we did a stupid thing because we thought we were going like, to go there to the Hard Rock Cafe to shop. But... In the end, a communication gone wrong. We ended up in the beach. Then, like, we are, we are all wearing black color under the hot sun. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So, it's just going to be sweltering heat plus skin heat and no sunblock? Lah. No sunblock. But, but okay, lah. other than that, we, we played uh, water rafting, ATV, or this. Quite fun, quite fun. Okay. Can, yeah. can, can. Let's do. Pour, you, pour your sake. Ah. Just a bit. Uh... Clogged up in the in my in my nose, yeah, just a bit. Yeah. Too much at the match. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no lah, <laughs> nose clogging. Uh. <laughs> yeah, nose clogging. So the weather a bit erratic uh, these few days. Uh. Yeah, it's 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 been a bit weird in Singapore lah. Uh. It's just random like rain hot, rain hot, rain hot. Like not just nonstop lah, uh. just nonstop. Yeah. The past few days have been very very hot though. Not as rainy as the as the past few weeks have been. Well, it's still rain though. It rains then after the sun will just immediately come out. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Is the fluctuation of the weather, lah? Yes, but what to do? What we do? We live in Singapore. All right. So, um, thanks for that for the introduction. Today we are going to talk about referees, and yes, the uh, yeah. the controversial decisions that have happened over the weekend and throughout the season. Of course, there are some that we obviously remember very clearly, and some that are just fresh in our minds. Example: two days ago during the weekend during the weekend uh, round of matches. But let's talk about today's topic. Is that the reason why we want to bring this up, right, is because there's been a lot of interesting decisions uh, throughout the season. Lah. And it's one of the the seasons that all of us here at the Kaki agree that it's been just very random and very weird where the decisions have not been consistent. There has been a lot of like scrutiny about exactly what constitutes certain rules and certain laws lah, and how certain referees lah, and certain games whereby something heavy can happen, but there's no... Pen, there's no like immediate reaction, but then something like can happen in a totally separate game, and there's a totally different reaction from the referee. So, um, what we want to talk about today is just basically uh, three things: some controversial decisions that we felt were like, why was that? Why did it have to happen? And could it have been viewed differently? Second, we're going to talk about our favorite topic everybody's been knowing about: V A R. Whether it has actually improved the game of football that we love. And lastly, of course, is that. How can referees in future be held accountable for the decisions that they've made that can actually impact the games? Of course, there is one particular topic that actually happened this season, but we'll get into that later. So with that, welcome to the Football Kaki, and let's go. <whistles> All right. So boys, the weekend, a lot of controversial decisions. Casmio's red card, Ricardo not getting sent off. Uh... Harvest, was it Harvest got kicked in the stomach? Felix, bro. Oh, Harvest, yeah, Harvest got kicked ha- in the stomach. Then Harvest got, F- Felix's ankle got stepped on. Yeah, Harvest got kicked in the stomach. Uh, a handball that wasn't called. A tackle that also wasn't called in the penalty box. Uh, all happened in the same game. Uh, for those of you who know who we support, right, you, probably most of you already know which game we're talking about. Lah. And a very controversial red card. So, um, boys, uh, we've already had about how many six months of how many months already in the season six right 20, 25 games you right? about six months already. 25 26 games you yeah so we've been august september october november december january february about six months six months into the season already yeah are there any like really strong controversial decisions that you really can remember off the top of your head right now 
that is very obvious that it was like, why did this have to happen? It shouldn't have happened. Let Jordan go first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Arsenal Brentford one one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when Brentford scored the equalizer, then yeah. they... you know, you know, that 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 uh that VAR check right. Uh, uh, this particular referee, uh, I don't know. Should I name it? <laughs> Just uh, name him. Uh. Name yeah. sh- more the the more we name, the more we shame them. Uh. Uncle yeah, Lee Mason. <laughs> so he took he took two minutes plus. Don't know how many seconds to check the first line of uh, uh outside. Oh, so because I think he took too long, he began to felt pressured, and then he he just oh just hit is on like his his onside. So at first he was checking the not so deep one, uh, because there's two lines right. Yeah, yeah. yeah so the first the first in swing uh. In the referee kick, that one is not offside. But then the the last touch before the goal, there was a header by I don't know who, and then it was uh scored by not guard. That one was literally like an offside. But I was uh I don't I don't even know that point it was an offside because it took too long at the at the first part already. Yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean because. They focus on one part of the video, one part of the video, yeah. right? Then they don't actually focus on the rest of the play, right? Yeah. Then I think also the the on field referee also kind of rushed them for 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 some answers. Uh. You know who was the referee that day? Right? You can recall. Uh, I, I know. I know. Lee Mason was the was the VAR ref, but I can't remember who was the referee that day. Um, I can't remember though. But I know because of this incident, got two guys, uh, uh, Lee Mason and, and another guy, uh, got caught. Uh, like was asked to leave, lah. Hmm. Uh, well. But referees, referees. This is my question to you all. Yep. Do you think asking like asking a referee to leave, uh, the job, a good enough, uh, intention or good enough? As a as an apology, or you think that, or let's say case to case basis, let's say uh, based on results, let's say if it's a one one, right? Yeah. So based on this event, that or oh, I have made a mistake, so I need to undo the actual live result into one zero. A bit hard, because yeah, that so, one is a bit hard. You cannot say that because maybe there's like still time left for like Brentford to equalize, you know, even yep. after the. Uh, okay. Yeah, even after that, that 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 round of play, so it's very ambiguous in terms of. It's very easy to say, like, oh, you just give me back the goal, or then then they can really. Yeah, but then you yeah. are foregoing like the mm-hmm. remaining minutes of the the game after that. Yeah. I I, mm-hmm. I think like changing the result is a bit difficult because usually yeah, it's very difficult. Usually, op- opinions form about this thing in hindsight, ma. Because we were actually mm-hmm. think that okay, maybe at this particular point in time, this decision will have impacted the game, lah. But when you're actually in the game, right, you actually don't really consider that. Yeah, that, yeah. Like in that, that in the moment, lah. So it's very hard to take away a result, right? I think that in terms of sacking a referee, right, I don't recall it's ever been done before. Mm. Like in so at least in, now they are uh, yeah now now in they EPL history, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it's and and to be really frank, uh, like we've been watching EPL since we since we were young, lah. Mm. The EPL referees are are one of the most controversial figures, mm. like in in terms of like officiating and everything. There's been a lot of controversial decisions prior to VAR also. Uh. Mm. So so like bad decisions, bad everything. Uh, obvious one is of course to me uh, the drop bar of the drop bar offside. That cost United <laughs> the league title. The one that was a, a whole body length offside, that one I got nothing to say. La. If VR was around, that one would have been, would have been good. La. But Mm-mm-mm. if you're asking whether it's a good thing or not, I think that changing the result is bad, but at least they're taking some form of action against referees. La. Prior last time, True. it was just like, oh, uh, referee made a decision, right? Then I stand by the referee. From what, from what I remember. La. But just what made you ask this question? La? No, I, I I just think that it's like it's like one 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 person mistakes involve the whole team, like the whole team, like the whole team effort trying to win something, but yeah. then it jeopardizes the whole team, lah. So maybe uh, I mean, if if not result, maybe point system or something like that. Yeah, I don't know. Mm, I understand. Understand. Fair point. Um. Okay. The 
one thing that I want to ask, right, is that okay, aside from the one that's that starting that is very that has already been brought up, which is the Arsenal Arsenal and Brentford one, that one everybody knows was controversial. Lah. What mm. about like the Everton one? Liverpool Everton Van Dyke. The tackle. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I, was, I was just gonna like come out talk like talk about that also because like the, you do see the way Brandak step on there, guys. The, yeah, the dude. guys. It's like above like Onana. Eh. It's, it's like, like Onana. Eh. Yeah, it was Onana, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Onana steps on his shin without even getting the ball. And also another one, right? If I were to pull up for you, right, it's the Fabino tackle on um Ferguson. Yeah, you know that one. His ankle was in the ground, and he like Ooh. completely stepped on his. The back of the ankle, yeah, and then it's just a yellow card, eh. and it's like, so what? What is the yeah. what constitutes serious foul play? You know, that, that's the thing yeah. that I, I also don't really understand because let's say for example, uh, we take into account those type of situations, right? Then if then I ask you this question, right? You know, some players, right? They have this habit where they will they will do the leg and the leg tangling thing, mm. where I take yeah, the, the leg tackle, scissors, right? I the leg scissors, so I take the mm. I tackle you from the front. Taking you from the front, right? Then my left leg will follow through from the back. But the thing is that because I win the ball, right? And I roll over, I go through you, right? Nothing nothing actually happens because to the referees, you win the ball, ma. Yeah. You win the ball, right? But that's the thing I can actually injure a player very badly, right? I mean, if you look at uh, Ericsson and Van Der Beek, both of them, their injuries are from, from challenges like that. Even Gana- even Ganacho from the last night's game. Yeah. Is like they yes they win the ball first, but then yep. their trailing leg goes into a leg scissors and hyper extends the ankle or the knee, which like traps which make, which causes impact injury la, which is very dangerous. I would say is like considered another. It's a very scheming way of injuring players. I feel correct, 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 mm-hmm. correct, and. And I know that last time, remember when they always do like old videos from EPA about tackling technique, right? It's always sliding tackle, right? It's always the foot down, starts facing the ground, right? Then after that, the your left, your your other, your non-tackling leg is stuck, stuck underneath your knee, right? Or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's those type of things where that was the proper way to slide tackle. Then when you do that type of thing where it's like trailing leg goes in, uh, it's not considered a two-footed tackle also. Mm. But it still yeah, yeah. can cause to, can to, cause to harm the referee, injury as well. To the referee, two footed tackle is two foot up, starts showing that like it's like as, yeah, clear, as, as clear as it is a red mm. card, you know, yeah. Correct, yeah, correct. Yeah. So, but if con- uh, if comparing to one foot start showing, okay, that, okay, that, that yeah, one. So I, that, 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 was, that was what I want to talk about later. <laughs> I think we should. Yeah. <laughs> that, okay, you want you want to move into that? <laughs> no, because oh yeah. So yeah, to want to to answer your controversial decisions, right? I think. Um, another uh, apart from the the one I um, we'll talk in the, in a, yeah, about in a short while um, yeah. and there's another one uh, West Ham versus Chelsea right oh, the, where the West Ham handball, handball clear handball you know by Suchek yeah Suchek handball and yeah. there was no penalty and it, it cost like Chelsea the equaliser if I'm yeah. not wrong is it's it the winner the, or the equaliser I think like like he fell backward right then the hand was at the back yeah so another interpretation is why did not why did it not go to VAR? Yep. And and it's not like the referee even if the referee missed it in the moment, right? They are yeah. like uh, there is a designated team of VAR mm. to look at cases yeah. like that. Yeah, correct. To help the referee see and if he misses plus, it up, you know. And plus the rule book of the this this referee and VAR thing, I just read out just now it says uh, when 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 will VR intervene or uh, is when the four key uh, criteria meaning uh, possible red card uh, penalty goal decision and the fourth one I don't know so so long any of the incident fall in this criteria they will call for VR correct but the thing is that in that situation, like we were talking about handball in the middle of the box, right? There's a penalty shout. Eh? Yeah, yeah. So, 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 so definitely is a, <laughs> they, they have not, it's quite inconsistent. Uh, yeah. It's, it's inconsistent. It's very, very inconsistent, right? And the one thing that I wanted to bring up, let's say you're talking about handball, right? And I think me and Paul talked about this in the previous topic. RB Leipzig Man City. Yeah, I mean, no, that, that's, hands, in the, that's in the, bro, I, 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 th- I still think the UEFA and Europa League, right, their refereeing is worse uh, than EPL. Yeah. 
De- definitely. Like, even I watched, yeah, I was about to say that the RB, the, that's the video I showed you, right? The Leipzig yeah. versus Man City. Yeah. The guy clearly played like volleyball. His, his hands are here, eh. Like here, eh. And he, yeah, and it's like, no, no say the hands are it's cl- close to the body it's or like, in an unnatural yeah. position. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, like the, like for example, like, uh, everybody remembers, uh, remember Man United versus PSG came Pembe handball, the one that, that gave Rashford the winning penalty. Mm. Yep. Yeah, that one is he jumped in the air right with his hands up. Uh, the ball hit his arm. Eh. Then that's considered a penalty. Eh. The ball hit the player did this. Eh. Yeah, and, and there's another and one um, last Martin week when, when Real Betis split when you right. Yeah. The guy the ball came in, the guy literally did this to control the ball. And they scored oh, from it. Oh. Like a half 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 arm half half forearm thingy. Yeah, like a yeah, half, la, yeah. half leg, half uh hand, you know. Oh, okay, if the, yeah. if the hand wasn't there, right, the ball would have been mis miscontrolled. Definitely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But we cannot say but also I must say uh, we cannot say that uh main United is not as well as this uh, because Fred did technically handball in Barcelona against Barcelona. Mm. I mean yeah. <laughs> I mean that, that, that's exactly why another and that's another inconsistent. Like even though we support Menu, right? I I do agree that that should have been a penalty for Menu. Uh for Barcelona. Yeah. What 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 constitutes the use of VAR? Who who decides? Oh, let's go and tell the referee to go and look. Yep, you get what I mean, right? Mm. It's like I know what I mean. No, don't get me wrong. VAR is is accurate in in pointing things out. It's the use of VAR that is inconsistent. Yep. Yeah. It's the people making the deci- decisions to go and okay, let, okay, let's go and use VAR because it can be a like like the Suchet handball, right? It can be a clear handball, but let's say uh, then the. You know how when you watch the EPL, it'll be like, okay, uh, check complete. There's no, uh, yeah. there's no need mm-hmm. for the referee to go. Yeah. So, so who, who, who makes that decision that the com- the check is yeah. complete? You know? Sure that. Yeah, no, I, 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 I don't mean, know. I get that you're a team of referees, but then I ultimately mm. I, I still feel you should let the referee go and take a look and then make let him make the choice himself. So correct. if he makes it wrong, mm-hmm. it's on him, uh, rather than yeah. the if you are being protected in a room. Correct. Correct. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so I, I just want to check out the one, the one that you want to bring up was the Casemiro record over the weekend, right? Uh, yes. Uh, I, I, I let's, let's talk, like, we can talk about that since it's fresh, right? Yeah. So, so, okay. So that one, right? To me, uh, it's a very controversial thing in a sense where he wins the ball, but his starts are showing. The ball, mm. ro- his starts roll, his foot rolls off the ball, goes right into the player. Record. Mm. After a VAR check. Okay, yeah. to be honest, when you look at it, right, in terms of the in, the in injury potential you can face, right, then yes, yeah. it's a red card. Yes. But I also want to point out uh, an, an another incident earlier this season when, uh, this one you can ask Jordan. Remember Martinelli, he crossed the ball? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. and then he, he, so he, the ball was already gone. Uh, and then mm. his trailing leg go and step on Trent's ankle and then he got injured. Eh. Mm-hmm. And then, so, yeah. so you're telling me that if if Casimiro's one, if that one is not intentional, then you cannot explain to me that that Casimiro's tackle is intentional. Yeah, because uh, the ball, like both of scenarios, side, the the key purpose was to play the ball, correct? Yeah, this one, me and Paul did had a did had a debate over this. Uh, whereas I still remember clearly where, because Martinelli ice was on the ball up, yeah. up in the air, so therefore. He was preparing to, uh, place himself with uh, do you call it the trailing leg? Yeah. yeah. So meaning when when the trailing leg made the impact of the ball, just nice Trent's leg was there as well. Yeah. Yeah. So that one wasn't a, a yellow or red, right? No, no, yeah, that's right. There's no, yeah. there's no, uh, there's it, no action. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, for this one. Uh, whereas if you make comparison to this one, this one, I think uh, yellow should be sufficient enough, but there's still a handful of people still think it's red. But then I look at the replay over again. Uh, it looks like it's a s- okay start showing, but it's not like an orange red. color. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, really. It's, like a, it's like an orange <laughs> color, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay, you punish because of what the 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 potential injury, or you put you no, punish because of the intention. Because some I, I read the rules right. Serious foul play, uh, it must include like certain kind of intention. You know? Yeah, because Casemiro did not really went through the whole body. You no, know? he only do a uh, one foot start showing. 
Yeah, and he got the ball. Uh, um, he got the ball. He, he, got he the did get the. He did get the ball. Yeah, he, he got the ball. He got the ball, ball. ball He didn't get the ball. Uh, just that both, both of them just like the ball was was in, in between, between both of them. Both legs. Yeah. Yeah. So then, just now, when the ball was being uh, brushed away, the start was on to the the guy's leg already. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Okay, but I want to bring this up, and this brings us to our next topic, right? Is that the reason why that red card happened, right, was because there was a call for a VAR check. Yeah. You see, okay, even the Anthony Taylor's initial reaction, right, was to give yellow. It's not a red card. It's a yellow card. Clear, like the first clear yellow card. Correct. Correct. Right. So uh, mm. the question that I have now, right, because if games like that are uh, require VR intervention, and of course they fall into the four different categories, uh, which is uh, penalty, uh, drugs, what, what were the four categories again? Uh, Serious penalty, foul, penalty, challenge, incident, yeah. uh, record challenge, uh, what else? Uh, go decision or something like that. I can't Offside, remember. Is it? Yeah. Or like anything related to... Uh, so, so to many, right, because this has split a lot of people, uh, VR... They are interfering in that particular decision, right? Many will say it was the right decision oh. because essentially it was a red card for a dangerous tackle mm. like, to some. Like. But to, to guys like to guys like me and Paul, right, as many United fans, we feel like, hey, mm. you give a yellow card, he won the ball, right? But right, if you win the ball, it, should be, it shouldn't be a dangerous tackle. Like. Mm. It shouldn't be a dangerous tackle. Like. But like we mentioned earlier, right, sometimes a training late tackle, even though you win the ball, can also end up being dangerous. Like. So mm. in that type of situation, right, and where it happens in other games or so, right, has VAR actually made the game better or not, in terms of referee decision making? Because I have an opinion about this, but I want to hear what both of you think. Think lah. I mean, uh, we have to we have to talk about certain. V- uh, okay, example we, because now we are only focusing on the bad, right? Yeah. But we did. We have to like if, mm. if we if you're talking about how if VAR has really improved yeah. the game, I, I think it it, it, it does. Eh? Like yep. example, the um, what what is a clear example of how? Uh, I okay. Maybe I, yeah, like I have maybe one in mind. Game. I don't know which game. I just remember. Uh, I, I think it's one of the Arsenal game, la, Or yeah. So basically, uh, this referee caught caught for a penalty first. So meaning he himself not sure. So he called for a penalty, and then he asked for assistance for the VAR. Yeah. And then he go and checked. Yeah, that is one perfect example of a good refereeing. Meaning Correct. he can call for it first. No worries. He can back it off later. Yeah. 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 Rather than you don't you don't give Yeah, like, correct, correct. Yeah. And then you, the, you what if you were wrong in terms of not giving, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this one clear example that I remember watching it la. So that the referee like a few times in that game, even even like uh uh for corners or this or even offside, he also uh tried to call the offers and then ask for the VRs assistance yeah. yeah i do think that that's a very good example because in essence the, what's the what the referee is doing right is he's using the var technology right <laughs> as a confirmation of what he thinks a potential decision could have, yeah. could have had on the impact on the game impact la. Mm-hmm. but i realized this uh and correct me if i'm wrong la, a lot of the referees don't do it that way they will just give the the thing later right then somebody from the var team right intervenes and ask mm. them to go and double check the decision yeah. So, right. The question that I have, right, is that is that a proper <coughs> method or a proper like way where it should be where it should be? Because it's very similar to NFL in a sense where if there's a decision that needs to be made where something maybe like let's say for example he's out of bounds in a certain play or certain things don't check. Right? Those, mm. those are when the challenge committee will come in and then they will ask to intervene. Lah. Then mm. they'll intervene and they ask the referee to take a look. So those type of things are whereby something goes wrong, the panel actually calls the referee accountable and says, you got to take a look at this. Uh. Mm-hmm. you got to take a look at this, right? But uh, the thing is that the difference is that sometimes in the NFL, they actually look at the whole thing as a whole mm-hmm. and the lead up mm-hmm. to it. Uh. VAR does not, depending on who the referee is. Oh. So one example is, of course, the checks are, uh, whereby they only show the frame uh, of the incident happening. So like to everybody, frame, right, right, they only yeah. show the frame of the thing that actually happened. Uh. So let's say, for example, uh, take the Kashmir because it's still fresh in our minds, right? Mm. They, the v, whole VR check took about two to three minutes. Am I correct, Paul? About mm. two to three minutes, right? The time span on the freeze frame 
or like the part that they kept showing to Anthony Taylor, right, was the fact that Casemiro's starts were up mm. and that the end point of the tackle is that he starts here, Shin. They only showed him rolling over the ball uh, for the first like 10, 10 seconds only. So it's like the like the it's like, like you the, try to selective choose the yeah the like the referee cannot get to choose and to see which one and then pause no, and yeah, play yeah, themselves. Yeah. So the VAR referee will play the clip that he wants to show the referee. Correct. Which is which is ridiculous, right? Because uh another incident, same thing, Casmero also, Crystal Palace, the caller, mm-hmm. and the so called stroke 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 strangling, right? They only mm. focus on the Casmero point of view. Eh? Yeah, There's and another show the Andre Ayu on the never show Ayu one it. Eh? Ayu's one and yeah. another one where literally they they push the throat oh. the throat into the person. Eh? So so it's like you don't you don't call those type of things that uh, it's like the referee is intervening, right? Because of basing on what he actually saw. And the one incident that he actually saw, but he's not looking at the whole thing as a whole. Eh? So, yeah, if, so if you want to punish one person involved, right? You should punish everyone that is Involved. Doing the exact same thing or worse. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I agree. Yeah so, yeah, so I understand that Casimiro got the red card and that, that is like understandable because he put his hands on somebody you yeah. should get a red for that. La. Yeah. Yeah, but you don't come and say that you don't or the other guy, the Andre Ayu can hit somebody in the throat and still get away with it. And still get correct. to play the game, you know. Correct, correct. Then the other one is also like Ziek. He punched that. He hit the, he did the same thing, right? He slapped the guy. Was there any... It was, was a... Yeah, he it was a red, then changed back to yellow. Mm-hmm. Also, yeah, so I, I can yeah, so this is telling me that I can just strike strike my opponents anytime I want. I would just yeah. get a yellow card for that. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's those are things where I don't know, lah. what do you think? I think like <laughs> some of the referee has forgotten like one of the rule, right? Is they they still have, they they are still the key decision maker. Yeah, like cause there's this. Uh, rule book says that can VAR overrule a referee? No. The final decision is always taken by the on-field referee. The VAR only provide advice. Yeah. So meaning like many a times the referee have switched their way, way around that they, yep. they, they use VAR as a point of proof and evidence then, then the, themselves using their eyeballs being the proof of evidence. Yep. So, uh, if this is the case, right, and the fact that the video evidence uh, now ends up being the VAR referees intervening, right, and possibly giving influential decisions, right, mm-hmm. what actually needs to be improved? Uh? Like, to be really to be really frank and really honest, uh, because there are some referees, right, that don't even, that just give a call to even check VAR. Then there I are have, some referees, right, where I they don't even the bother to go to the screen. Now. What's your solution? So, I. Uh, you still keep VR the way it is. Yep. Mm. But both teams, right, get to challenge one time. You know, like how tennis, you can challenge the call. Oh, the empire. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. So I believe, right, that you don't, you don't, but you limit to only one challenge. So, or like maybe two, two maximum. Yeah. Okay. If you get one challenge correct, then you get to keep your challenge. Yeah. Yeah. If you get your challenge wrong, then you down one challenge to prevent like time wasting. Okay. Then I got a counter, I got a counter to that. Uh. Then would it wouldn't it be better right to follow something similar to the NFL whereby if they see a call that is controversial and they find that it's a wrong call, I can challenge the call. Yeah, as in that, that's exactly why I no. feel that like example a ref let's say I'm on a team that, that is losing getting the wrong call, right? I yeah. can I, I should be able to challenge. Correct. Correct. But mm. but they do end up in a situation where I challenge the call, right? And it's based on what I think is correct for my team. La. So at any given time in the match, uh, they can challenge, right? But I know in tennis, is your allocated challenges per set, right? Yes, per set. Three set. Yeah. NFL is three challenges per half. So yeah, the, half is, the half is longer. The half, the is, half is longer. Mm. Yeah. The half is different. So I think in football, right, should it be like maybe one challenge? One per half. Uh. One per half. But because, I mean, like, if let's say, for example, you you do that, uh, uh, yesterday, right, Chelsea... The first half already got too many. Yeah. yeah. yeah first half, we got one. Uh, Chelsea could have challenged one already. Mm. Yeah, and and they would have gotten it right, ma. So they get to keep the challenge Correct. again. You get what I mean? Correct. Yeah. Correct. So so they would have gotten it. They would have gotten it right. Ricardo Pereira would have gotten a red card. Yeah. So that's my solution, yeah. la. I feel that teams should be able to have a say in when it comes to um protesting calls that is going against them, rather yeah. than you just 
be at the mercy of the referee and the VAR room, you know? Yeah, yeah. I agree. George, what do you think? Uh, I mean, or you got a different solution? L- no, I mean like Empire way, right? Then if like, uh, who should get involved? The captain or the club manager? Coach. It should be either the captain or the, or the manager, I feel like. I, but in, okay, but in, in NFL, right, is the, is the coach. The head coach. So the head coach is the one that can throw, that can call. In tennis, it's because the individual sport, so it's a tennis player. So I think, I feel like it should be the coach that actually has the decision to make the call. So they should share screen, like, like together make a review at the VR screen, right? Yeah. Yeah, but there has to be a certain limited uh, time frame whereby they have to initiate the challenge if they want to do the challenge. Mm. So it means that the idea is that they have to, I think if let's say you lay it down, right, they have to go to the fourth official and the fourth official has to communicate to the referee that the, the, the manager wants to challenge the call. Yeah. So, so it's stuff, it's stuff like that. Lah. So moving to the next, to this point, lah, so since we are doing that, right, so honestly, have you concluded that VAR has, it made the game better? Or is it made it more controversial okay. because it's put in the hands of the wrong people? Yeah, it's, to me, the VR is accurate in terms of technology. Yeah, but true. But it's, it's wrong because of human error. It yeah. just uh, apply it on the wrong timing or, or, or it's or like... the wrong person using it. Yeah, yeah correct. Yeah. Like you okay. abuse it at the wrong timing. Yeah, yeah lah. We, there's mm. a lot. There's a lot. Lah. <laughs> there's a lot of different <laughs> controversial decisions, right? So because of that, right, my question becomes, right, since we are trying to prevent abuse of abuse of authority or abuse of the technology that we're facing, right? How can referees actually be held accountable for this stuff for if they actually do make a big mistake? Because like we said, uh, Lee Mason being forced to resign, right, I find it's a bit extreme. Mm, uh, actually, it's not his first time eh? that that Arsenal yeah. Brentford game, right? It's not the first <laughs> time. I read up. Uh, I think that if add up to Arsenal that game, right, it's the fifth or sixth time already. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah, it's it's five or six times, so th- th- that's why the decision was quite fast. Okay, if, if let's say it's the fifth or sixth time, right? Okay, then that's a bad decision, lah. But how do you make referees more accountable? Because I know there's like there's two perfect ways. Okay, one right is that you you follow the rugby way, where you broadcast the conversation between referee to VAR room. You broadcast uh-huh. to the people watching, like us, like that. Yeah. So we will know whose fault is it. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. So, like example, uh, like Lee Mason, right? Yeah, he said, okay, uh, he tells the referee, uh, I, I think this is the situation. I recommend that you go and look at the VAR. Yep. And I'm also in like recommending a yellow card or red card. You know that kind. I know what I mean. Yeah. So at mm-hmm. least, you ultimately you still put the mm-hmm. the final call to the referee, which is stated in the law book, lah. Right. Yeah. The uh, ultimate the call is decided by the the final call is decided by the referee yeah and the second way to hold referees accountable right is that they do a post-match interview <laughs> <laughs> like how managers do post-match interview the referee needs to do also I feel <laughs> then got ready okay. some more yeah la, but, hey, but okay I got this question uh. side note this is just a bit of a, a thought if they were to broadcast the referee the referee conversations between VAR room and the and the referee right yeah. well you have another Abu Dhabi 2021 incident. In no, it's, in, it's just referee to if he, uh, not not re- coach to referee. Uh. I know, I know. So there's no so, way both teams are influenced. Correct. So <laughs> the thing is that, but the thing is that you end up in a situation where it's still one influencing the other. No, no, no. It's not. Now, okay, mm-hmm. currently now they are influencing each other, but it's just we don't hear it. Yeah. But mm-hmm. now is we want transparency, right? Yeah. So we, we can know who to blame. Because uh. example, I ask you, uh, you, do you blame Anthony Taylor or you blame Andre Mariner? You don't know, right? Both. You blame both, right? But then I if you both. hear that conversation, right? I think I will blame the VAR room. I, I also think I'll blame which the is VAR more, room. Which is more, which will make my opinion change of entity later because you, he, he gave a yellow card. Yeah. So so the thing is that I, I look at it this way. Like, both, are, both are at fault. The VAR room definitely has some influence because he initially gave the yellow card, which I agree with Paul. Like. So, uh, um, George, ask you this question, right? How much of influence, right, should the VAR room actually have by, right? Let's say you minus out all these things and they put everything on transparency, right? Mm. Should the VR room have that much influence? Because you must understand, uh, like what I also think uh, is that it may be more than one referee talking to Anthony Taylor. Yeah, but room, it, right? it's different because if four of the referees are, they already know what they want to do, right? Which is like, yeah. maybe they have an agenda and you also don't know. Uh. Yeah. If four of them are on the same agenda, then the, whatever they tell Anthony Taylor, he will follow up. Uh. 
Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So it's it's a bit hard to say mm. that all four are, are like equally just and like equal, you know. Okay, Jobs, what do you think? Uh I would okay, let's go back the time before VAR starts. Mm, yeah. Before VAR starts, uh there's many uh offsides that was caught yep. wrong. Yep. There's many uh goals uh across the goal line was caught or was caught off. Yep. Like yeah. And then uh now I've in placed uh okay, even tackles that uh that human eyes may not able to see, like uh, yeah. especially uh, okay. Let's for example, uh, Grealish. So at, he at like to goes, right? yeah, yeah. He like to he like to somehow fake a uh, trip over onto the floor. Yeah. So with all this, I have now come in with a VAR. What does the VAR help? So last time is hundred percent of on on field referee eyes and two sides. Two side lines. Now yeah. I have input a VR to assist these three referees on the field. So I would I would only expect them to take up at only thirty percent of it. Thirty percent of the who the yeah. VR the VR room. Yes, ten percent on the side lines and 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 on field referee. I think it's just, it's just basically if there's a a case where you really clearly will impact the game, which is like the other mm. penalty, red card, offside. Or uh, match match like changing situation. Like. Yeah, yeah, one match, of match, the match changing situation. So yeah, like players diving in a box, um, mm-hmm. handball in a box. Yeah, uh, violent like challenges. All these mm. are should be reviewed by VR, no matter whether yeah. it's a uh, clear or, uh, the or obvious error. Yeah, yeah. They can capture the face. It should be that. reviewed by the on field referee, and you let him decide whether is is it a a clear and obvious. So if he check, at most he check, and then it's okay, no no penalty. Then just carry on with the game. Yeah. You don't you don't mm. do the checking for him, just because he missed it. Eh. You get what I mean? Like, you should let yeah. him review because maybe the the game is so dynamic. He he may have missed one or two things, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You let him see the replay himself, and then let him make the decision rather than yeah. you say okay, uh, check complete, no handball or no yeah. check complete, no offside that kind. Then that is so yeah. lame. Yeah. I, then, yeah. then like that, would it be better that let's say for example, like the VAR check only be caught by the referee on the field itself? No, but what? Okay, so, that that brings me back to the same point. What if he misses it? Then he doesn't know, ma. He doesn't know that he needs to yeah check la. the VAR, yeah, because he may have missed it. Correct. So, so it has to be a ten- So you're basically both of you agree that it has to be a tandem thing, lah. Mm. But I feel it has to be fair, irregardless of the team. You get what I mean, right? Like yeah, to yeah. me, I also don't want to win in a way that my opponent get red card unfairly. You know. Even yeah. though it, it will mm-hmm. benefit me, lah. But as a football fan, it's not nice to see, ma. Because if like that, if it, if it can happen like that, it can happen all over again. It can keep rolling on yeah. next time. Yeah, yeah. It's, that's it's true. Able, that's true. That's true. Like it's people just bad, abuse VR like... instead of yeah using it properly. Yeah. So okay. So we back to this, ah. Uh. So essentially, right? How do we hold referees accountable? Is that basically no matter what happens, right? The referee on the field should be the one making the final decision. Correct. That's what you're saying. Regardless, I mean, ultimately. Now it's still the same. There shouldn't be any influence, influencing of decision. Yeah. No, but the thing is that now, right, you okay, so if that's one, right, then you also need the like broadcasting of the live live communication between VAR, VAR room and referee. Yeah, that, 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 that is definitely um quite beneficial because they already tested it in the Australian League in football. Yeah. And it's actually quite cool eh? yeah. because I went to see some clips, right? It's like uh, the VR room was like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I'll, I will recommend uh, Rick Hart because of uh, violent conduct. And then he, the referee go and look. So when the referee is looking at the monitor, right, the guy is talking to him, explaining yeah. or what mm. his reason that, that at least we can hear. Ma. We we know that this yeah. is the competition mm-hmm. between them. Not just say like, hey, I think, you should, mm-hmm. I think you should just give this guy Rick Hart. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. And, and, you see and, the fruit. And, I finished the fruit for you. Uh, you see his stats are showing. You know yeah. that kind? Yeah. 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 George, do you think? And it reduced like potential bias. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree because it has to be an informed decision as to why you are telling him to send this player off, right? Yeah, instead yeah. of uh, you said you go look at the screen now, uh, I freeze the frame for you. Then you go and look. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then <laughs> you, know. I mean, which is what happened. Yeah, ninety percent of the time he was looking at the screen. The the the, free, the frame was frozen. Eh. Yeah. Like, yeah. I agree. I agree. Then he, like, then he, then he basically, oh, I'm just gonna look at this. Then I think he didn't even go close. He just stood at the screen and he just stood it like that. Yeah. Yeah, so like the th- the th- to prevent situations like that again, I feel that 
yeah, I, I, to me, lah, my solution is to broadcast the the conversation between VR and referee. Yeah, like, because if, if you, are, if you already, claim right? to be fair and just, right, then you got nothing to hide, ma, right? Why must you not yeah. broadcast mm-hmm. the, the conversation? If, if, you, if you're doing your job well, people will, will applaud you. Eh. People will know that, okay, this yeah. guy, yeah, this yeah, Lee Mason true. actually not, not a bad referee because he makes proper mm-hmm. calls and, and fair calls. Ma. Okay. Okay, I think Paul has uh is very into this topic, right? But we shall <laughs> leave that for another time. He's really going into it very very heavily. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's good is I think that uh, we, all I want that is a fair game. Because, all I want is a fair game, yeah. Because it's it's, it's really true, la. like I, I feel yeah. that VAR decisions, right, and refereeing decisions in the past few games have been influencing games too heavily already. La. And it's not a and it's not a, and it's not influencing games for the better, it's influencing games for the worse. Eh. Yeah. Because it yeah. makes the whole whole game stay in controversy. You ma- you imagine, right? Like, for example, uh, someone can win the, a, a title or, or get relegated because of your call. Eh? Yes, I agree. Yeah. And mm. you must remember, this is just happening in a normal league game. If, imagine if this was mm. a Champions League final or an FA Cup final or World a Cup last final. day of the season or the last day of the season, right? Where two teams are fighting for for a trophy. Eh? You imagine, oh. right? If the a VAR incident happened now, uh, and uh, during the Aguero the Aguero goal, right? Prior to him, prior to him, when he scored, the the goal cannot lifted, or the goal mm-hmm. got removed. Uh. you know how much controversy that will actually cause, or not? Example of a situation, uh. So, so we just have to hope uh, that VAR, although it, yes, it does improve the the view of the game as a whole to make referee make to help referees make informed mm-hmm. decisions, uh, it does not necessarily actually make it better because of who's the one wielding the power behind the VAR room. Mm. I think that's the consensus that all three of us have. Lah. All right, so that is it for this particular discussion on referees and VAR. All right, so that is it for this week's episode of the Football Kaki brought to you by the Chit Chatter Podcast Network. For those of you who are listening, thank you, and we hope that you continue to listen into our various shows where we have the Kopi Bros every Monday with our friends Paul, Brendan, and me, Dad, and of course, the SG Draft Podcast with the whole crew every Friday where we discuss and pick on various topics. So from everybody here at the Football Kaki and the Chit Chatter Podcast Network, thank you for listening in, and don't forget to run the khaki, and hopefully there are no more VR controversial decisions. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.